लेक्चर स्लाइड पहली वाली क्विज वाली नहीं मैं आज सोया ही नहीं तो मेरा नहीं करता एक है जीरो वन Okay. Good morning, everyone. We will go. Uh, we will be doing lecture twenty nine today, uh, and um, we will uh, discuss conditional expectation. Um, so I will define that. So let A be any event, and uh, x and y be two random variables with ranges r x and r y. Then the conditional expectation is defined as follows. So the thing that Uh, you need here is um, is this okay so the 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 PMF of the conditional random variable okay so we can think of x given a as the conditional random variable so if I have a PMF of that then I will plug in the values I will get those values and then I just have to multiply by x i if I have to compute expectation of x given a okay and uh, so this is for an event a. And then uh, this could be also written in term for for x and y random variables. So y taking some y j value will be some event A. Okay, so same thing applies here. It's just that I need um, these values now. So probability that x um, uh, given y and x i given y j. So if I have access to these values, then I can compute these uh, these conditional expectations. Since this is an expectation, I have to multiply by Uh, x i here okay so so this is the definition of um, conditional expectation and uh, we can look into uh, some examples so consider the point set of points in set g defined as follows so this is the same example that we did in the last class uh, these are the pair of points that satisfy this inequality okay so in total there will be like um, 13 points and the probability to pick one of the point will be 1 over 13 And so, if we pick a point x, y from this grid at random, then the probability of choosing is one over thirteen. Okay, so these are equally likely. Okay, um, so the question is find the expectation of x given y equals to one. Okay, so if you are given that y equal to one, then then what is the average value of x that you expect? Okay, on average, what is the value of x that you will expect? Uh, similarly, I can ask um, what is the average value of x I will expect if um, it is given that y will lie between minus one and and two. In other words, y will be like zero and one. Okay. And similarly, we can ask what is the expected value of the modulus value of x, given that y lies between minus one and two. So, to to compute uh, expectations like this, okay. So if we if we look back at the formula. Then we have to invoke something like this, where y j will be one. So expectation of x given y equal to one. Then we have to do this. Now this will be probability that uh, so conditional uh, be probability that x given y uh, x at x i and then y j is one, right? So in our case it's one. So we need these values for uh, different values of x, right? So once we have this, then only we can go ahead and 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 compute this. So So here uh, we need those, those um, uh, uh, we need this uh, these values x i one okay. 
So, so once we have this, actually all three can be computed. OK, so the, the, the main deal here is to actually um, actually derive this, right? So now um, let us try to like solve this problem here. And uh, this problem, some part uh, we have uh, proved this before. OK, if you um, remember from the last class, then uh, we have uh, 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 we have identified this probability that x given y um, values. OK, so I, I'm just going to take those uh, those from uh, the last class and then I will just um, uh, continue from there. OK, and then just show you the expectation. So if you recall from the last class, then uh, <coughs> what we did uh, was uh, the following. So uh, recall uh, from last class that um, uh, that uh, uh, given y equals to one, so given uh, y equals to one, uh, x um, is uh, uniformly distributed. Okay, so that is something we did um, in the last class, uniformly distributed. Okay, so uh, that is uniformly distributed over the set um, uh, uh, minus one, zero, one. OK, in other words, for these values of X, OK, in other words, we have already computed this in the previous class that um, so so these uh, these values, right? OK, so I mean, I I don't have to explicitly like see this, so I can just uh, define these values here. So uh, it was like one over three uh, for uh, X equals to minus one. OK, and it was one over three for um, x equals to 0 and it was 1 over 3 for um, x equals to 1. OK, so and <clears throat> these are the only values allowed. OK, so not um, uh, not x is minus 1, 0, 1 because um, because y is 1. OK, and uh, remember it has to satisfy uh, uh, mod x plus mod y is less than equal to. So this puts a restriction on x. OK, so that's why we are restricted to this now. And in this we have computed before that um, the probabilities. The probabilities came out to be 1 over 3, 1 over 3, 1 over 3. So this is the, this is a uniform distribution. OK, then you have equal values for uh, for all the discrete points, then it follows a uniform distribution. So this this is something we have now. <coughs> If I have to compute uh, the expectation, so I will invoke the formula, right? So x given y equals to one, then uh, uh, then the, the 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 formula for this is all the values of x. So all the values of x are these, are, right? So x i is x i times p x y for that x i, right? So these are like minus one times one over three, plus zero times one over three, plus one times one over three. So this will be like zero, okay? Um, so, so on average, uh, the X value that you will get given that Y is equal to one, um, the average value of X that you, you will be getting, uh, will be zero. Okay. That's what we, uh, we see from here. Now the another one was, um, uh, find expectation, uh, of X given that Y lies between. So, okay. So Y lies between, um, uh, minus one and two. Um, so this um, so minus one less than y less than two implies uh, y is in the set zero one. So um, so in so um, um, so if we um, if we try to now uh, compute. Uh, for this um, for this event, if we now try to compute the probability, then uh, so we, we can define this as an event. OK, so it's like let us say the event A. OK. OK, so now um, so now what is the um, the probability of the uh, of the of the uh, event A, OK? So probability of the event A uh, will be probability that Y is equal to zero 
and probability that y equal to 1 because these are equally likely, right? So if I separately compute the probability, because I will need this in the conditional because eventually I have to, I, I, I wish to use the formula for the conditional here. So first step is I want to find probability that this will happen. So um, yeah, I mean, I should have written also like this. It doesn't matter why should you define separate notation also, right? So I can just write this. So this is the same thing as saying that probability that y 0 plus probability that y is 1 because that these are the only values that y will take and 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 I know that for this like um, I have like um, uh, five possible uh, choices to go with so it's 5 or 13 um, and then uh, for this the choices I will have is like 3 over um, 13 okay so those many those many x are there, right? Because this is like, um, eventually you see, this is like a um, uh, joint experiment going on. But uh, it, although I'm computing the individual, it will still depend on what are the other values of x, right? So so then for zero, there will be five values of uh, x that satisfies the inequality this. And for one, there will be three values of x. So although y is fixed, x has to vary, right? So those will create those many uh, samples okay uh, so this is like uh, so 8 over 13 8 over 13 and um, and uh, yeah so uh, now uh, like um, we want uh, to f compute the expectation first is like to find the pmf um, of this right so probability that um, x given a let me use this uh, a so for for different values of k right so this is defined as probability that x is equal to k and uh, a okay and then uh, probability that a right so so probability of a uh, this is the a part right so a we have computed to be um, uh, 8 over uh, 13 and this guy still remains okay so we have to okay so 8 over 13 is 13 over 8 x equal to k a okay so i've just uh, written things and uh, now um so uh, uh, now can we like write the those values now right so we can write so we can uh, write those uh, those values the probability that x given a and let us say for minus 2 Right. So if, for, if I compute for minus 2, then it's 13 over 8, probability that x is minus 2 given a. So this is 13 over 8. And and this is the joint, right? So this is like, um, uh, so what are the possible uh, values that a uh, can take now, right? So, uh, and a is allowed to be like 0 uh, or 1 value, right? So the only thing that goes well with this guy is like 0 value. OK, because other values will create. I mean, that will not satisfy, right? The so it create empty set. So, so X is uh, minus two and only value that goes well with this is 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 zero. So I should not write this. Let us say it's two zero. OK, OK, so um, but two zero probability is like one over 13. OK, so this is 13 over eight times one over 13. So this is overall is one over eight. OK, similarly, I can compute other values. Probability that X given A minus 1 is um, is 13 over 8 and probability that X is minus 2 given A and this is 13 over 8 and then uh, the the joint values. Um, OK, I have to put minus 1 here, right? So that was the mistake. So. So for, with minus one, what are the values that goes with the current um, event? It's like zero, zero and zero, one both goes well here, right? So it's like zero, zero uh, plus uh, uh, joint of, uh, sorry, uh, minus one, zero. And then, um, oh, I'm doing minus one, right? Yeah, minus one and then minus one, one also goes well. And uh, this will be one over eight, one over eight, okay? So 2 over 8, uh, sorry, 1 over 13, 1 over 13. So 2 over, so 13 over 8 and um, uh, 2 over 13, right? So it's 1 over 4, okay? So similarly, like we can um, do these computations. Uh, so if we compute 
um, minus one, and then okay. Now if we do zero, now if you see because of the symmetry, zero also have only two options. So this is like one over four. So similarly, and uh, if we see uh, probability that x given a two, then this has only one option. So this is symmetric to this guy. So it will be one over eight again. Okay. So thus, uh, so our goal is to understand expectation. So now we can write expectation. So this is um, x i probability that x given a, and then um, x i and x i is in the range of x. Um, so uh, if we now compute these values, then the the, the formula is like there, and then whatever the values of range of x is there. So so for minus two. Uh, um, uh, the probability value was this uh, for minus one. The probability value was one over four plus zero times uh, one over four plus one times one over four plus uh, two times. Uh, like you, you compute this, these, these values, uh, remaining part, and then due to symmetry, you will get this. So overall, this will be like zero. Okay. Now the C part uh, you can do. Okay. So try. So because this is very uh, like um, similar, it's just that xi in place of xi you put the mod value. So that's very easy one. Okay. Okay. So now what we will uh, consider next is law of total probability, uh, and it is defined as follows. So remember um, uh, the 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 law of total probability in the in the in the previous case uh, before uh, in previous classes we have seen those law of total probability. Uh, and uh, this is just a uh, just an extension here. It's just that now I'm conditioning on uh, some other random variable. Okay, so so it's it's really not a not a new thing for us. Okay, uh, because I'm summing over all this. So so probability that um, uh, probability of a. Remember in law of total probability, and then mm, we could write this as probability of a given b i and i uh, for 1 to n let us say where uh, where b i's uh, form a partition okay so it's it forms a partition um, uh, of the whole sample space actually so if you sum over this um, probability of these b i's then they will sum to one only then th this will uh, like like hold okay so, and then probability of b i here so this was the law of uh, total probability in the usual sense that I mean usual or like the single variable case when we were discussing, but there is nothing, no harm in replacing this by some uh, uh, event defined by the another random variable y. Okay, that's the only change here. So law of total probability in terms of like a two variable uh, case and law of total expectation also we can write down now. So if b1, b2, bn is a partition of a sample space S, then this is called law of um, of um, of total expectation. Okay, so this is called law of total expectation. So how do we see this? Like this will um, come from the fact that um, well, we can write the the definition of this guy because we have defined this in in, in previously, uh, and we have also used this in the example, right? So we can uh, have a quick check of this uh, this uh, whole thing. So we know that. Uh, um, expectation of uh, x given b i is sum over x j probability that x j uh, given b i. Okay. So and these are all j and I'm summing over j. Right. So this is by definition uh, of the of the conditional expectation. Okay. So now if I if I multiply by probability of b i on the both sides. Okay. So multiply by um, uh, multiply by uh, by by probability of bi because I need this term, right? So probability of bi on both sides. So if I do that, then um, then uh, what I will get is uh, sum over i uh, expectation of x given bi and probability that uh, probability of bi. Okay, so this is just um, and then what I'm doing is also summing over i. Okay. So I'm summing over i. So there are two steps going on and sum over i. OK, so same thing. So here I will have double summations. There is sum over i and sum over j. 
and then xg um, probability that xg uh, um, and given bi okay and then uh, i have multiplied by bi right so this is uh, bi here okay now i have to like observe a um, few things here because um, this is a uh, this is the i term uh, is there and and this is the the loop is here is with the j right so so what i can do here is that i put the summation only on the terms where i dependence is there and xj should go with the, with the, with the j okay so what i can do is that pull out the j summation first and then i write uh, xj and the remaining i summation um, uh, terms will be here so probability that xj uh, given bi probability that b and probability of bi now <clears throat> now this um, so this is i okay now if by law of uh, total probability uh, this term is uh, probability xj okay so this is probability xj so this is probability um, xj okay so if this is if this is probability xj and then you have a xj here right so xj probability of xj is um, is nothing but expectation of x right so so hence the proof right so expectation of x is um, is the is the is this quantity that we were supposed to find now for a discrete random variable x and a discrete random variable y we always uh, start with our uh, definition with some event b but we all, our goal is to get to some other variable y so there is really no loss uh, of generality anywhere like um, bi was any event and y equal to yj is any event it's just that now i'm using a different variable name uh, so this is um, just an just an application of this so now let us see an uh, example okay so let x be a geometric um, uh, distribution and, and the and the question is find the expectation of x okay and i can i want to apply this um, uh, this conditional um, uh, expectation uh, that we just learned okay so um, and i want to condition on the on the first toss okay as an example okay you may not i mean you need, you know the the expectation of the geometric uh, by the usual way okay but i want to like try uh, using the conditional okay so uh, or the law of like total expectation I want to apply. Okay, so I see this as an application of that. So if I, um, so first of all, we want to recall what was a geometric, right? So the geometric was, um, so geometric uh, P um, was, we toss the coin repeatedly until we observe the first head. Okay, so, and and the probability of the hat is given to be p okay so geometric p is like toss the coin repeatedly toss the coin repeatedly until until first head okay so this is something we we know from geometric and here uh, probability of head is considered to be p and the random variable x stands for total number of coin toss that I need to do to observe the first head, right? So this is like total uh, number of coin tosses, right? So in this case, uh, we know that uh, in this experiment, there are like two choices, um, head or tail. So two possible choices, which are head or tail, okay? And now we would like to use the conditional, uh, as I said, you could have done this in a straightforward way, but I just want to see uh, the law of using law of, of total expectation. So if you use law of total expectation, what does it say? So uh, I, there are like two conditions I can put, right? So it's heads or tail. So the Y uh, that I will choose is, so it, it will be like expectation of X and then Y is H and expectation of um, uh, uh, X given T and, and then the probability of T, 
it's just uh, I, I just want to use to law of total expectation. So this will be expectation of X given head probability of head plus expectation of um, X given T then probability of T, right? So <clears throat> So uh, probability of head uh, is P, and this is expectation of X given H. I just copy over, and then probability of tail is one minus P. So, and then expectation of um, X given T. Okay, now what are these values, right? What are these values? Remember, um, what does the geometric say? So toss the coin repeatedly until you observe the first head, right? Okay, so, so what do I conclude for, um, so what do I conclude for this guy, right? Expectation of this, right? So what does this uh, this mean to me, right? So I, given that head has occurred, how many total number of coin tosses I am expecting, right? And X follows the geometric, right? So can you tell me in the chat, like what could be the expected value of this, given that the head has occurred, how many coin tosses now will be expected okay and answer is already here right so toss the coin repeatedly until first head so now how many tosses you're going to do can you tell me in the chat one exactly right yeah because one right so the count will be one right yeah so so the count uh, the, the uh, it's saying uh, how many um, times you have like um, Toss the coin. Like I'm just trying to clarify the, uh, one of the uh, one of the answer. Like one of the guy is said zero. Uh, it's not zero because the count is like the total count. I'm saying so when the head happened, one count already happened, right? One coin toss already happened, and then uh, that is where I will stop. So then X will be like I already got the first head. That's already given. So so the, so in this case, it's exactly one. I have to stop right there. Okay. So this is one. Now this guy, we, it's a little bit tricky because we haven't seen head yet. We are given that tail happened, right? Uh, so there is still a process we have to follow. Uh, I mean, we can't stop yet, right? So what do you still like? How can I simplify this further, right? So given that tail has happened, how many coin tosses you are expecting uh, after that? Right. So can you like simplify this further just to like um, just to like just to simplify this? So given that tail has happened, so one count already gone, like X is at least one. In this case, it was exactly one because you hit the head. But in this case, tail happened. So what you can at least interpret is that it is at least one. But then what next? Right. So one plus what? Right. One plus, um, yeah, one is still there, right? And then remaining, yeah, exactly. So expectation of X, and then it's like independent, right? So remaining again depends on the expectation of, of X. So it's like one plus expectation of X, right? Because you added X, uh, one already, and then from here onward, it's completely independent because the first, uh, because these, Trials are completely independent. What happened is in the first uh, case, you completely have to forget, forget and now remaining uh, number that you have to wait for is independent of, of what happened before. So you still depend on just expectation of X on average. Okay. So you added up one, that's good. Okay. So you, you because, uh, because already you lost the first trial and you didn't get the head and the remaining ones you still have to wait so this will be one plus expectation of x and then so we, we we can write we can simplify this right so this guy is one okay so this guy is one plus uh, one minus p and then um, this guy we can write this as one plus um, expectation of x okay so um, uh, okay So, um, so solving for the expect because we got expectation term right, and we were supposed to find expectation. So solving for uh, for expectation for expectation, we get it is uh, one over p. Okay, so that's the the answer. 
answer to this and uh, we can verify that this is this was the case for the for the geometric okay in the usual uh, computations okay now um, let us see uh, some more uh, example like probability requires a lot of examples to get through ideas because there are definitions and then uh, to understand that uh, in the practical scenario it's good to do examples so i want to do a lot of examples also so let us see another solved example so number of customers uh, n okay so these are this stands for number of customers uh, visiting a fast food restaurant uh, follows poisson distribution okay that we know okay so wherever there is a number involved um in 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 visiting a restaurant or number of bus arrivals or, or in in certain time and so on so and these are like uh number of visiting fast food restaurant in a day like a, because it also involves a duration right okay so let us put in a day uh follows a poisson distribution uh, which is uh, this okay um and lambda is like the average a number of customers uh, visiting in a day right so that's the poisson that we know um now um each customer arriving in this restaurant okay so additionally something is going on here okay so it's poisson so far but the customer that is arriving in restaurant can additionally also purchase a drink with probability p okay so there is a probability that the arriving customer will purchase a drink and uh, and uh, <clears throat> and we assume that the customer arriving and purchasing the drink has nothing to do with the number of customers arriving okay in other words like we are trying to say that this behavior is independent of the 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 the, the distribution n okay and it also doesn't get influenced by uh, whether the other customers are buying the drink or not okay so these are the independence criteria that we assume um okay okay so 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 which is independent from the other customers okay so in this line i have encoded the fact that there is no so it's um, dependence on n okay so it's independent from n uh, and then it doesn't get influenced by other customers buying the drink as well okay so what is the average number of customers uh, who um, purchase drinks okay so what is the average number of customers who will purchase the drinks so this is a yeah so the first step in a probability problem sometimes is more about a modeling like how can i how can i model this to a set of distributions that i am familiar with right so there i see that there are number of customers and i see that these customers moreover this moreover they may or may not purchase a drink okay so they may purchase a drink with probability p right so where does this overall thing fit with the distributions that we have studied and the hint is like we have studied a distribution uh, that can model this uh, this okay all i mean one thing is like there is a poisson already so that's the distribution we have studied but what i'm saying is like overall for overall modeling we can use a we can use an existing uh, distribution so can you already guess like which uh, distribution could be uh, could be used what are the distributions we have studied we are talking about uh, discrete okay so we are right now in the discrete joint um, uh, distribution so bernoulli okay so bernoulli was with one trial and head or tail right and then we have just now we have also seen uh, an example of a geometric so it's like um like Uh, the the number of trials that you are going to do to arrive at the first uh, head and then there was a binomial okay and then obviously there were like uniform and so on and uh, and there was also binomial so binomial was um probability of getting k heads in n trials right in a coin toss let us say okay so which of this you think can model this overall can model this overall okay so which of these you think can model this um, these this this overall okay so can you like already tell me a hint yes so binomial yeah that's correct okay so 
so slow can yeah mehul so binomial is indeed um, goes well with this because um yeah and we if we fix n to be some n right so that's also so if i fix n to be n th then it's like uh, it's like i have done and i'm i'm planning to do n tri trials of my uh, of my coin toss and then um and then in each trial, uh, there is a probability that I will buy the drink or not. It's the same thing as saying I'm going to get heads or tails. Okay, so this fits there. Okay, so if if n is equal to n is given to us, then uh, then x is so. So you see, we are also modeling this as a conditional, right? So suppose n equals to n is given, then x is a, is a binomial. Okay. Or one other way to look at is like it's a sum of n independent Bernoulli. Remember, binomial was like uh, sum of n independent Bernoulli. It's like Bernoulli. It's like Bernoulli was just one coin toss, and then the probability of getting head one head or one head, right? Binomial is an extension of that. I just do n trial, and the probability that I had I get k uh, head. So naturally, it's a and so one other way is to say is like given that n equal to n number of customer arriving is fixed. Then there's a conditional random variable, which in this case will be n equals to, uh, I mean, x given n equals to n will follow a binomial, right? Binomial with uh, the variables n comma p, obviously. So now let us uh, write down this fact. So these are the type of modeling things you have to uh, get used to if you want to apply probability in, uh, in general things, okay? And remember that many of these distributions are taught to use because they are used in many uh, modeling real life modeling so uh, some combination of these um, uh, this is is often uh, useful in solving many problems so so we um, we can like uh, try to solve this uh, let us say we solve this here um, so uh, given and so since i have already explained in the text i will just write down things okay so given uh, n is equal to n uh, then X is a uh, okay. Let me also write that line with the Bernoulli, okay, so that you also recall that. Then X is a sum of n independent Bernoulli. Bernoulli, uh, Bernoulli. Let us say with this p, okay, and uh, this is nothing but um, uh, which means uh, it is. It in the sense like this, uh, this random variable, and so this it is uh, binomial, right? So, so I will write this in the concrete notation. So n equals to n x given n equals to n. This itself is a random variable. Okay, so conditional we treat this also as a random variable. So, so this follows. Um, so the notation for the follows was uh, this tilde and then binomial. Okay, so binomial n and n p, right? So yeah, so from here we get the probability that x um, given um, uh, let us say uh, so so n so it's like k given n and this will follow and from the formula for the binomial we know that this is the case p k and then one minus p n minus k okay so this is the formula for the binomial and and since for the binomial we are aware of the expected value which is n times p so that is well known for binomial we are not going to compute it again so this is n p okay so then um, and then uh, my goal was to compute um, expectation of x okay so what is the average number of customers who purchase uh, drinks x uh, drinks so uh, so this means like so expectation of x is the expected number of number of uh, customers purchasing drink okay so here uh, i did not write it in the beginning but uh, here the x was the number of customers purchasing drink number of customers purchasing drink okay so so x was the number of customer purchasing drink, and then the the question was average. So this means it's the expectation of x. And if we do the expectation of x, let us do this here. So this will be um, again like 
I know the conditional, right? I know the conditional and I'm supposed to find the expectation of X. And so this clearly tells me that I'm going to use the um, law of uh, total uh, expectation, okay? Because this conditional is given to me and the individual uh, PN uh, value is given to me, okay? So using that, I can like, um, because PN, uh, and uh, th th this will be like um, Poisson already given to us. So in this case, it's, uh, it's, it's better to use the law of total expectation, okay? So this is like N equals to zero to, uh, let us say, sum over um, all, and then uh, X given N is equal to N, and then P, N, N, and then this is um, N, P. So this is the four binomial, we know this, okay? So this is N, P, expectation, and then uh, P, N, N, N equals to zero to infinity, and then here, um, so what was like the, um, um, uh, so so P, I can uh, take it out and this will become expectation, okay. So P uh, and then N, P and N. So this will become the expectation of N, right? So expectation of N, uh, but expectation of N was lambda because that's, that's, uh, that's what we know. For a Poisson, uh, that's what we know, okay. So this is the, the, the answer in this case. Okay, so okay, PMF uh, and um, and expectation of random variable and uh, so let x and y be two random variable and suppose g is uh, g x y. So this is like for a uh, for a function, right? So for a function, what how I should do this? Um, so for a function uh, of uh, of x and y, the first step I want to define is the PMF, right? So PMF is like uh, all possible values that this function is going to take or z is equal to z, okay? So it's the same thing as saying z is equal to z and that's uh, like I can um, I can find it by summing over all those um, uh, those that lies in this, this, this given event, okay? So for all those uh, x, i, y, j that satisfy this condition, and those has to be added up and that will give me the probability of Z. So in this case, the expectation will be given by, as usual, these are like what we have, um, these are extensions of the one variable case. So if I'm going to find expectation of a function of a, uh, of a random variable, uh, then uh, I will just plug in the, the value of the function itself. And then now I will come, will put the joint um, PMF. Okay, so I have to put the joint PMF. And that's how I can also compute the expectation of uh, uh, of um, uh, of a function of uh, two random variables, right? So these are just extensions of that. And let x and y be two discrete random variable. Then expectation of x plus y is expectation of x plus expectation of y. Uh, this thing is better left as an uh, example. I would say, uh, I mean, as an exercise. So I mean, it's easy enough. Okay. So you, you just use the usual process uh, um, definition, usual definition of uh, X plus Y is X, I, Y, J and joint of um, P, X, Y, X, I, Y, J and then you split the sum and then you have to identify this individually. So this will be like a routine check, okay? Okay, so let us skip that. Now PMF of the difference of two the metric. Okay, so I, I, I'm, I'm, I'm doing some solved examples here. Uh, so let us say x and y is geometric and then uh, the new, so these are like functions of um, of two random variable now and then I'm supposed to find the PMF of Z. Like in the two variable case, how can I find PMF, right? So these are examples for that, right? So if I uh, try to solve this problem, so if, if I was given that uh, it's a geometric, right? So and then I am supposed to find the uh, find the joint, uh, right? So, uh, okay. So, what are the ranges here? Um, uh, ranges for x and ranges for y because they follow the geometric, so they are like the natural numbers. So, it's go from one, two, three, and so on. And then, since z is x minus y, then I will have a difference of these ranges. So this, that will give me the set of integers as the range of z. And then x and y are geometric. Um, so then we have to exploit that fact, okay? 
so let us see if we could um, uh, simplify this to the extent that we can uh, answer this. OK, so um, so first of all, what we note is the range of X and range of Y being geometric uh, is uh, one, two, three uh, and so on, and which is a set of natural numbers. And this implies that a range of Z. OK, so range of Z uh, will be all possible like differences X minus Y, right? So this will be like dot 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 minus three, uh, minus two, minus one, zero, one, two, and uh, three, and so on. Okay, which is nothing but a uh, set of integers. Okay, and since uh, x, y follow geometric, geometric uh, with p, uh, individually what we know is that probability that x, k, and similarly same thing for probability y, k will be p, Q K minus one. Okay. For K equals one, two, three, and so on. Okay. So P, Q is basically one minus P. Okay. Where Q is one minus P. And so remember what is our goal? Our goal is to find uh, PMF of Z. Okay. So Z is X minus Y and uh, Y. And then we are supposed to find. So we are, we are supposed to find P uh, Z of K. Right, so this is same thing as probability that uh, uh, that uh, Z is equal to K, and this is the same thing as probability that X minus Y is equal to K. Okay, so this is the same thing as probability that X is equal to Y plus K. Okay, and um, I would like to invoke the law of uh, total probability here. So if I invoke the law of total probability, then um, I will condition on y, okay? So uh, I will condition on y, then uh, the j is equal to 1 to infinity, law of total probability. So law of total probability, okay? So, so here I have x is uh, y plus k, and I'm conditioning on y equal j, and then probability that y is equal to j, okay? So this is law of total probability, and then um, from here, what do we have? Once I condition on j, I, I can fix y to be j, right? So if I do it here, um, so j equal one to infinity, and probability that x is equal to, since j is fixed, I can substitute j here in place of y. So j plus k given um, y was j, um, J, yeah, and uh, and this will be, <coughs> and, and then probability of uh, y is equal to j term is also there, right? But x and y being independent, uh, like this, um, this will have like uh, uh, no effect actually. So this will be just um, j equal to one to infinity, and probability that x is equal to j plus k and probability that y is equal to j so since x y independent okay uh, so this is what we have okay and then uh, we may uh, do a a case by case analysis here let us do for so there are there are possible because <coughs> k is uh, the value taken by the z okay so it's good to like partition this into two parts where uh, okay no why this line came okay so we can uh, partition this into two parts where k is uh, greater than or equal to 0 and k is less than uh, 0 if k is greater than or equal to 0 let us see what happens in this case uh, probability that z k <coughs> so this is um, this is the this is the term we have I mean, the same thing holds for any case, but let us, for k greater than equal to zero, this is what we have. And um, and then here, um, um, we can substitute the, 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 substitute the, uh, the values for this, because we know this and we know this individually, right? Because this is a geometric, right? So x is equal to j plus k, so I can put those uh, values here, <coughs> right? So if I put those uh, values here, then what do I get? So, so J uh, is equal to one to uh, infinity. 
PQ uh, like uh, K minus one, and this was for K, but now our K is like J plus K, right? So, so this will be like uh, PQ uh, J plus K, and uh, <clears throat> and then we also have to um, to adjust by. Um, Hmm. Okay, is it? Um, but k is like uh, greater than or equal to zero. So I think uh, to adjust that we can subtract. Uh, yeah, we can subtract one here. No, no, no sub why should I adjust, right? Um, yeah, so j k is j plus k. In place of k, I will put this so j plus k minus one. Yeah. So that will follow exactly this. That's fine. OK, nothing to do. Yeah, so in place of K minus one, I have J plus K minus one. That's it, right? And then. OK, and so this was the 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 the, the, the first term here. OK, so this stands for this guy X equal to J plus K. And then there is a Y. So this will be J minus one, right? So P Q J minus one. OK, and. Um, and here, like, so it's a simplification thing. So if I simplify this or whatever, like even I will leave it like this, okay? Because these are known values, right? So it doesn't matter to me right now, okay? So, and then uh, the question is, what will happen with, uh, uh, what will happen if uh, K is less than zero, right? So if K is less than zero, um what will happen so let us see this do we have another space here so for um k less than zero um pz of k and so let us write down that formula because in the we were in the new page so px uh, j plus k and py j okay. j plus k and j right Sometimes we drop this x equals to sign, right? Without loss of, without any ambiguity. Okay, so uh, this is what we have. Um, and then uh, what we are uh, told is that k is less than zero, but then since these are um, geometric, uh, they will only make sense when uh, j value is such that the sum of j plus k is like um, uh, greater than or uh, equal to zero, right? So, or for any other value of J for which J plus K is not greater than or equal to zero, they are going to create an empty set because those are not really defined um, uh, for the geometric, right? So those will create an empty set and, and for those values, uh, it's uh, going to be um, zero, right? So what we really want is uh, J starting from uh, one minus K, okay? So that, the, so that these terms are going to be positive. So we can adjust this uh, this index because for other cases it's anyway zero, right? So we want to make sure that j starts from minus k plus one. Okay, remember that uh, k can take integer values, right? Yeah. So uh, and then uh, I have an infinity here. Um, so only those cases I am worried about because if j is less than this you are going to be making it less than zero okay so okay so th this is like p q and j plus k minus one i just substituted that for this this is the valid um, term okay to write and then p q and then this is j here so this is j minus one because y also follows the geometric okay um so what do we have so okay again i will leave it here okay so this is like, um, um, I don't think like we have to do any more. OK, so we don't have to waste time in simplifications of this. So this was the. Uh, so so this was the case where we saw we had the known distribution, but then the distribution was written in terms of some function of uh, of, of the random variable. In this case, it was a, a bit simpler function, which was X minus Y. And then we were supposed to find the PMF of that. And remember that X minus Y does not necessarily remain uh, geometric anymore. OK, so although you can start with some known uh, distributions, but it doesn't guarantee that 
the sum of those distribution will still follow the geometric or the difference or for that matter in general you cannot claim uh, that uh, a function uh, would always remain uh, the same distribution okay there will be special cases where it will follow the still the same distribution okay so some difference or a function of two random variable can lead you to something uh, really different type of uh, distribution and uh, yeah so and then we have used the the, the law of like um, like total probability and independence okay so in this case these tools were useful law of total probability and independence and that is how like that is how like we could break this up because joint uh, as such was not uh, given to us okay so remember in the function of this uh, the uh, like um, we did not uh, have to bother about like the um, anything to do with uh, x y and so on okay so they, they were like completely independent they could be computed independently and uh, we got the we got the pmf okay um, I will just define this. I, I don't know if I have uh, much time here. Um, I think it's already okay. Let me stop. Like officially, I'm supposed to stop at 10. 10 uh, because this is a new thing now. So let us stop here. Okay. So conditional expectation we will do in the next class, and uh, then after we will all we will actually start with um, uh, joint continuous random variable in the next class. Um, so then, so far you have seen the discrete case. So you have like uh, summations, double summations, uh, and so on. And then we will just translate this um, uh, joint discrete to joint uh, continuous. Now, instead of having joint PMF, we will have joint PDF. Instead of having double sums, we will have double integrals. Okay, and and so on. Okay, and then and then getting marginals uh, PMF. Okay, from CDF, then you have to do partial derivative of the CDF. Here you were doing partial sums, right? So sum over y, then you get marginal with x. Sum over x, you get marginal with y, and there you will integrate out. Okay, or some, uh, or if it is CDF is given, then you will partially differentiate. Okay, and if uh, if PDF is given, then you will integrate out one variable. Okay, so it's a double integral. If you integrate out y, then you get uh, in terms of x and so on. So and then conditional expectation, all this will be just um, extension of this. It's just that in the continuous case, we have to use integrals and then you have to do differentiations and so on. So this is something we will see in the next class. And then we will move to um, uh, to some of the important results, um, um, bounds and so on. So, so Markov inequality, Chebyshev inequality. Uh, we will also do co covariance, correlations, and these things are very useful things. Um, uh, yeah, and then uh, we will also see statistical inference uh, in the last few classes uh, and uh, Bayesian inference and so on. So we will we will end we will end at statistical inference. OK, if I have time, then I will do random processes. OK, so maybe Markov process and Gaussian process if I have time. But so, that's yeah. Hello. So sorry, sorry. Sir, can you just explain it better? 